Welcome parents, and uh, we see a few students here with us tonight. We'll go ahead and let you all get situated. I am Valerie Hardy. I am super excited to see so many of you here tonight, some familiar faces and many new faces. I am super um, happy to say that I'm the proud principal here at Mary Ellen Henderson going into my second full year here. And beside me I have um, the person who I could not function without, Dr. Rory Dippold, our assistant principal. Good evening. We're looking forward to a great night with you and having you explore more about what we offer at Henderson. So you get to start this evening with us, and we're um, hoping that we can give you just a little bit of an overview and some um, information about our school, about some of our instructional programs, our framework of understanding around MYP, and then um, a little bit about who we are, because I think part of understanding the journey um, of Mary Ellen Henderson um, and this name of the school, and also us, is understanding a little bit about what you'll, um, your students will experience as they come in as our largest class ever which we are super excited about. So, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, many of you are familiar with the history behind our school and the naming of our school behind such a pioneer in our, um, our, our community here in Falls, the city of Falls Church. Um, we have some fun pictures that we'd just like to share with you, which is a um, the picture here on the left is um, the Mary Ellen Henderson tribute wall, which we have upstairs if you have a chance before you leave tonight to take a peek and learn a little bit more about her and her legacy and impact, um, something we really are proud of to have uh, our students learn about her and her um, impact with us. Uh, you'll be able to see that as well and um, three of her grandchildren that were able to help um, uh, break ground with us on that which was fun here this past fall and then a picture of Mary Ellen Henderson on Broad Street which probably looks a little different uh, than what we all know it as now um, but we just thought that would be neat to share with you tonight um, but a little bit about Mary Ellen Henderson from some people um, who we think you probably want to hear from more, some of our students. So we're going to start this video here um, for you to hear from them directly about what life is like uh, here every day in the halls and in the classrooms um, with us. Welcome, Welcome to Henderson Middle School. School. Welcome to MEH. Welcome, Welcome to M.E.H. Henderson. Welcome to Mary Ellen Henderson Middle School. Hi, I'm Jelana, and I'll tell you what I like best about M.E.H. Um, I like there's friends, there's a lot of classes, so you won't get bored of the same teacher. Um, and it feels, the day feels really short, short so that you're never feeling tired. What I like best about MEH is the amount of help that you can get from your teachers. MEH is awesome because you have a lot of freedom. You get to choose some of your classes, like music. And there are a lot of cool after-school activities you can participate in, including newspaper club. I think that my favorite part about MEH is all the nice technology that we get to use. For example, we can use 3D printers and everyone gets their own computer for the school year. My name is Charles. I like science and I like to facts because I like to know about things, learn to cook much better. Hi, I'm Andrew. Hi, I'm Deepshika. My favorite encore is pee and health because there are so many fun games. So my encore favorite encore is art. So you do more uh, crafts and you enjoy drawing. So it would be best. What I love about MEH is PE. PE is fun, and they have really awesome games like um, pinball. Newcom, Pinball, and the equipment is awesome. That's what we love about MEH. Choir is fun and really enjoyable, and you can express yourself through music. You can enjoy working with people and play fun chorus games with friends. Choir is a place that you can be creative. You can also sing your heart out. And you get to learn fun new songs. So you should join choir next year. Go choir. So every day, we offer great programs such as running club, musical theater, and arts. 
My personal favorite is the place after school. The late bus comes at 4.30 p.m. One after school activity is the makerspace. It's so much fun. You get to use your creativity and knowledge on robotics and circuits. I made a robotic husky and a light-up teddy bear. So come on down to the makerspace. Your book club is so fun to do with your friends. And it gives you a chance to participate in making the gear. I mean, it's awesome! See, middle school's fun, right? We, we're biased, right? Obviously, we love the highs and the fun, the fun that comes in middle school. And as you all um, who are first-time middle school parents will learn, um, there are, there are moments that your child will come home in complete joy of everything that will come, and, and there will be moments that you're going to say, what happened to my child? But that's the roller coaster that comes with adolescence, and we embrace it. Um, and we nurture that, and we have fun along the journey with you. So um, please know that we are in it with you, as is every teacher that you will have an opportunity to interact with not only today, but during your child's educational experience with us at Mary Ellen Henderson. So a little bit about Dr. Dippold. Uh oh, I think we're stuck on the screen, Dr. Dippold. Um, just a little bit about us, because I think it's important as you um, start to entrust your children with us that you know a little bit about um, the two of us who are, are charged with leading this school. I'm a Northern Virginia native, one of the rare few. Um, I did grow up uh, and went through Fairfax County Public Schools, went to James Madison University, go Dukes, a few of you. Um, and then went to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, go Tar Heels, because it is March Madness um, coming up, and then uh, the University of Virginia for my um, educational endorsement to be a school administrator. Um, I have worked as a special education teacher, um, a school counselor, I've worked in central office, elementary, assistant principal. I've done a little bit of a lot, but middle school has always been home. I love middle schoolers. They are just my jam. Um, and so uh, when I had an opportunity to come here, uh, have a deep personal connection to the Henderson family, I loved the thought of a community school. And so too many things lined up for this to feel like um, the right place to be. So I am super honored and privileged to have the opportunity to um, lead here um, and work alongside this guy who is amazing. Principal Hardy, you're pretty awesome too. So I'm from uh, snow country right outside Syracuse, New York, and um, I attended the University of Notre Dame uh, for my undergrad in history and then my master's in education. Um, and then I've been at Henderson for the past 13 years, and I've loved every minute of it, um, working primarily in seventh grade, teaching civics, um, language arts, and U.S. history, um, and this is my second year as the assistant principal. So it's nice to see a lot of familiar faces. Um, parents or parents of children I've taught, but then also now serving in this role. Um, I've also uh, recently finished my doctorate at George Mason University and also got my uh, educational leadership certificate as well. So one of my um, interests is also is in kind of what I'm going to be talking about later with approaches to learning, looking at self-regulation learning, project-based learning, which is an integral part of what we do at MEH. So please follow us, the administration team, on social media. Uh, our Twitter accounts are up there. And this is just a little fun picture of one of the highlights um, of this year. Uh, we were in Aladdin Junior. The students, we had over 100 participants. That's not even counting the tech crew. So we had almost a, a quarter of our students participating in the musical, which just occurred a couple weeks ago. Um, and if you know Ms. Gross, she loves to always add something to uh, raise the bar. And Ms. Hardy and myself and Dr. Noonan were also had a little cameo with a friend like me. So that's just a fun little picture. And again, just one of the experiences that, you know, we're also have middle school in our hearts as well. So um, yeah, yeah, just fine. a little fun event. 
So as um, you've probably heard a little bit about this and you'll hear much, much more about this as you go through your rotations tonight, specifically with um, our school counselors, um, we have had uh, a lot of work to do as we prepare specifically for your class um, of students coming in uh, for the class of 2026. Our projected enrollment next year is going to be 641. That is big for us. And as we've had to think about this as a school community, we've had to think about how we were gonna make that work. Um, our school board has been incredibly supportive in helping us think through what that looks like from um, a fiscal standpoint and a staffing standpoint, um, but we've also had to think about it from a structural standpoint. And our current master schedule really has kind of reached its lifespan of function, functionality in terms of how we make everything work. Um, as an IBMYP school, um, that is our philosophy. That is who we are and how we um, approach our, our instruction with students. We also have to think about how we continue to make the pieces that are exploratory to middle school, the pieces that are essential for our content and curriculum from the Virginia Department of Education, and then also those pieces that make us unique to Falls Church in terms of how we continue to know students by name and by need. Um, a driver. So our teaming philosophy, um, keeping counselors with, with students for those three years so they can develop those relationships and know you all, um, they're all things that are important. And trying to make all that work is not easy. Um, so a few things that are kind of critical to this work are obviously looking at um, the physical education requirement, which some of you have heard about, um, and needing to find a way to make that work that fulfills the state requirement. We're excited to have a brand new gym, again, um, to make that work, uh, and also looking at um, the CTE, so the career and technical education requirement is something that the Commonwealth of Virginia has um, put a lot of emphasis on for a lot of good reasons, but it also fits nicely with our work that we do in um, the MYP design cycle, and you'll hear a little bit more about that um, as you go through your time with us here at Henderson and also here tonight. Um, our world languages carousel, which we are really proud of that we've built for our sixth grade students to give that exploratory look at all the languages that we offer and that they'll be able to experience as they go through their time with us at Henderson. And then lastly, thinking about how they have different and unique ways to continue to explore on elective opportunities. So those are all things that we've had to consider about how we make it all work. So it's meant we've had to do some shifts, which I know have been um, a little different, but our, our goal has been to continue to allow students choice and opportunity. And so as you go through um, your cycle and your rotation today with the counselors, please feel free to ask questions. Um, if things aren't clear, they are here to help navigate that process with you. Um, and again, Dr. Dipple and I will be rotating around as well this evening to help answer any questions you might have. I do want to introduce you to someone who's pretty critical to our work here in our school, um, and you will see her not only with us here at Henderson, but she also bridges her work um, over at George Mason University too, and that's Alicia Miller, and she's our MYP coordinator, and I'm going to have her come up and just talk to you briefly a little bit about um, what MYP looks like here at Mary Ellen Henderson. Good evening. It's nice to see you all here. Um, as uh, Valerie said, my name is Alicia Miller. This is my first year in Falls Church City Public Schools, and I'm very excited to be here. I am working both here at uh, Mary Ellen Henderson and over at George Mason High School. Because our middle years program runs grades 6 through 10, sorry, can you hear me now? Um, oops. So when you look at the program model, which might be very similar to the one you've seen for uh, PYP, at the heart of it is the learner. And this is something that we want to stress with, with MYP is that it is student-centered learning. We are trying to help students um, own their learning, have agency of their learning, um, and we do that through a concept-driven inquiry-based curriculum. Around the model are the different, uh, the eight subject groups of MYP, and what connects them are the concepts uh, that our students explore across the subject groups. Those are set in context, which is where we help students explore these concepts and the content of their classes um, from multiple perspectives, which is what helps us sort of meet the aim of the, um, of the IB education, which is to foster international mindedness. So your students will start their MYP journey here with us in grade six, and we'll continue it all the way through um, when they start at George Mason through grade 10. 
A uh, big feature of the um, MYP is also the projects, the culminating projects. So your students in fifth grade, if they are currently at TJ, are getting ready for their exhibition. That is a culminating project of the PYP. In uh, MYP, it is the personal project, and students finish that at the end of grade 10. However, there is a, an additional project that sort of prepares them for that and meets them along the way in grade 8, and that is the community project. And we will also um, be taking your students through that journey here in eighth grade, which is very much focused on community action, um, addressing a need in the community, and finding a way to, to improve it. And that can be a local or a global community. I think that's about it. OK. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Miller. Uh, Mrs. Miller has been an outstanding addition to the Henderson family. She has brought a lot of different uh, experiences, um, being an NYP evaluator, trainer, um, and also just her wealth of knowledge has been an asset to our community. Um, so we can't thank Mrs. Miller enough. Another component that is integral of the Middle Years program is the approaches to learning. I know it's a little difficult to see, but you're gonna hear a lot about it. Um, you'll hear some tonight, and then you'll hear a lot about it um, the next five years and beyond. So the approaches to learning are focused on thinking, self-management, uh, sorry, um, research, communication, and um, social skills. So those are all the foundation, and every unit that your uh, child experiences will have those skills integrated uh, within the course, and they're also the foundation of the course, but then also, again, it's that uh, we're building students to be global learners. So again, these skills are things that they're gonna be working on throughout their middle school experience, um, but also, as you know, they're uh, skills that we as adults continue to work on. So building that, or fostering that um, lifelong learning process is very important to us as well. So we know that um, you could sit here and listen to us online, right? <laughs> um, but you're really here to have an opportunity to meet some of our sixth grade teachers and our encore teachers and the counselors and really get a chance to hear about what your students will do as they make their way through sixth grade. So I want you to do that because they are phenomenal educators and I want you to have an opportunity to see why I enjoy coming here every day. So what you have, if you did not pick it up on your way in um, at this table, um, are half sheets of paper that have the schedule broken down for you. Um, and, and we ask that you follow the schedule by your child's last name so that you know which rotation you'll be starting with. Um, and we are just slightly behind schedule, which is fine, we'll just adjust the times. Um, but as you make your way upstairs, you'll get to do the workout that our students get to do every day. So if you have not had your workout today, um, you will get it uh, as you make your way up to the sixth grade pod, seventh grade pod, and eighth grade pod. We have signs and we will have people that will be able to help direct you to the respective locations so that you can hear from the sixth grade teachers, the encore teachers, and the counselors. And we will um, do uh, rotations so that you know it's time to transition to the next um, station. Thank you so much for being here. I know Ms. Miller also left some MYP brochures for you to please pick up um, as, as you're uh, making your way out. And again, if, as you have questions tonight, please don't hesitate to ask any of us. At eight o'clock, if you um, have additional questions for Ms. Miller uh, regarding MYP, if you are a parent who is an ACE parent, um, or if you have a, stu a student who has uh, special education services, we will have um, all three of those uh, service providers available for you in the library to ask more detailed questions. Okay, thank you all so much for being here and enjoy your evening. We found that as we instruct them with it, they get very successful and they feel proud of that. Um, and then the other ones are kind of the, your typical, what you would think of with producing text writing and checking for revisions and and using the language appropriately. So we do make sure that we have um, walked them through that process, so, so much so that my kids today actually taught my lesson. So, you know, I didn't really have to. So they, they really do, um, we walk them through that process so that they are very successful in either choice option. We use both the same way. And our individual, oh, sorry. 
I just want to say I'm just a raptor. Oh. I am the special education or one of the special education teachers on the sixth grade team. I generally support English, um, but I also teach reading lab, which is a really great elective that we started this year. It was a class designed with the reading specialist. Um, so it's another kind of intervention and kind of support class that we offer in reading um, that some of your students may be able to take. Sorry. Our individual and societies. <laughs> I'm Marielle Barry, and I'm Natalie Gleese. And sixth grade history covers, we review Civil War, which they study in fifth grade, and we end at generally the Cold War era, um, late, well, up, up until 2000, that's the goal. And we're lucky with history in this um, school because the emphasis is on primary sources and it's project-based learning. And the primary sources we can use are infinite. With We use um, the Library of Congress. There's so many different sites that we go to to expose the kids to a time period and make the period come alive. We want them to love it. And it's largely project-based learning. Yeah. So some of the ways that we try to make history really engaging for our students in um, my class, we done like we did debates today. Um, we had an immigration potluck um, when we were talking about immigration. So all the students like brought in a dish from their culture. They had relatives that immigrated to the United States. Um, the students made their own yellow journalism article when we talked about the Spanish-American War. Um, so we're really trying to make history engaging and fun and hands-on and relevant to the students' lives. So it's not just probably the lecture-based history that a lot of you guys experienced in your education. And we're just doing World War One right now, and tomorrow they're going to come in and learn and listen to the songs of World War One and analyze the lyrics for propaganda. So there's so much to do. And so the kids have fun, and before they know it, they've researched, they've analyzed, and they're writing, and they don't even know that. So that's the goal. <laughs> um, our foreign language. I'm Beisha Hong, I'm the Mandarin Chinese teacher. Hi, I'm Kelly Schumann. I teach French. Um, and in sixth grade, our language acquisition wheel is structured so that students will take um, three different languages over the course of a quarter, and the fourth class is one of the design classes you'll hear about later. Um, so students in sixth grade will take a quarter of French, a quarter of Mandarin, and a quarter of Spanish. And our goal in sixth grade is to expose them to their language options for the future and get them to experiment with the language and see what language they like um, see what feels natural to them um, so that they can make a choice for seventh grade that will then carry them through, hopefully, the rest of their academic career. Um, we teach science. I'm Catherine Solar. And science in sixth grade begins the exploration of setting up and running experiments. That's our probably biggest part. Um, we focus a lot on the vocabulary as well as you learning the techniques for doing analysis of data. And, and then reflecting on the importance of science and making decisions based on a science fact and the idea that you support whatever premises you do. So we have also like the four different MIP criterion and, um, and work through those. But um, a big part of it is actually learning how to run and collect data and do experiments and then writing about them. So it's again, of course, that we support the English, learning those facts and learning how to find information, how to write information, and the math with learning how to do the graphs, how to analyze data, and how to calculate some of the findings. So I'm going to start with some of the transition things. One of the big differences between here and the elementary school is that they have eight different classrooms that they're going to visit every other day. Um, luckily, most of them are within this pod area, so there's not a whole lot of movement except for to go for their PE and their encore classes. Um, and the biggest, kind of most exciting thing, but maybe the most stressful thing is the lockers. They all get a locker. They get them assigned um, either the first day of school or if they come to that locker day the week before. Um, and we do a lot of practicing with locks and give them time to make sure they can get it open, but it is stressful and we are here to help and they can come home and be super upset about it, but just tell them tomorrow's another day and they get more practice at it. If you happen to have one of those twist locks at your house, if you give it to them and let them practice it, it's really going to help them be super speedy when they get their lock 
next year, even if you go out and buy one just for the practice, it really does let some of that fear just go away when they come in already good at it. So. So next up is on communication. So communication is going to be a little bit different in the middle school than it was at the elementary school. So our first thing is that we really do utilize our paper agenda. So that's a way for teachers to communicate um, what is the homework. So students will be writing down their homework daily and we'll be checking their agendas and signing off on that to make sure that they have it written down. Um, the second thing is using Schoology. So Schoology is our online resource. Um, and that's a way for students and parents to be able to check up on the course materials and the different assignments that we post on there. Um, there's also a calendar feature so that students can stay organized and they can plan and also have their homework there as well. Um, and then on Schoology, there's also a messenger um, feature where students can write messages directly to teachers. So it comes into us as an email, but it helps them learn how to compose emails and be able to communicate with adults which is a huge skill in middle school to have. Um, for Power School, that's a way for, that's our live grade book. So we grade things, we put it up right away, and students are able to see their grades live, and parents are able to also follow up and see if there's any missing assignments and any of the little comments or notes that we would write in there for those assignments. Um, finally, with email, um, emails don't go to directly to the teachers necessarily for everything like how it was in the elementary school. So the main office will receive kind of general information such as attendance. So if they're sick or late or leaving early, that would go directly to the main office. So we would email there. Um, for specific content questions, that would go to the content teachers. So for example, if you have questions about math, math questions would go here or to Ms. Carson. Um, so those are specific <coughs> subjects that you would ask about. And then for counseling, that's for kind of a whole child or wellness type questions or um, things to share. And specifically, if you want the whole team to know about your child, about something, email counseling and say share with the team. So communication gets bounced between the team members a lot. And it's just important that we direct the communication and help guide the children to learn how to communicate with adults as well. Next on the schedule is schedules. So um, next year, your student will be part of a block schedule, which is going to be an hour and a half class, A day, about four on A day, four on B day. So it's going to be wonderful for the kid that just really only wants to have math every other day or science. So, but um, we will, part of the first few weeks, is really spent helping these sixth graders understand, make sense, break their schedule apart. We're always out in the hall. We're making sure they know what to go to, when, how to transition to lockers, to their next class. Everything pretty much except Encore is in this pod. So that it, they make sense of it. So before you worry about a sixth grader sitting through a 90 minute class we are all familiar with the age of sixth grade and most of our blocks are in 20 minute like chunks so it is not a 90 minute as i say from texas sit and get you are going to end up there moving lots of activity lots of transitions and everything so i love it when they say oh is class over so that we understand a sixth grade pretty well but schedules again mainly a block every other day, different classes. One of the things you may see on your schedule that is a little bit different is something <laughs> called Flex. Um, and that is, again, one of the uh, eight blocks that we have. And it is an opportunity for students to have um, enrichment or some um, different types of classes are offered during that time. It's similar to like what Tiger Plaza is, but it, it's run on the every other day uh, block schedule. Um, we do provide students with some homework time during that so that they can um, meet with teachers if needed to or make up any work. So that's a great opportunity for students <coughs> and a flexible time that we can use there. After school opportunities. The school it takes very seriously a well-rounded child. It's not just academics that we emphasize. This is a great time in your child's life to develop hobbies. And if you go to the uh, school website, this list and click student, under student, it will come up after school opportunities. And you will 
want to go back to middle school when you see this list. It's like Disneyland. <laughs> I'm just going to read a couple of them. Improv sketch comedy, um, model UN, MEH artworks, student wow. council. We have the next group. Oh dear. We're like six okay. minutes well, over. check this out. You're we have a, uh, a, a career fair that we run every year. If you're looking to get an opportunity to come into our school, um, see our students firsthand, um, kind of get in there and understand what a middle school uh, day or a morning would look like, um, uh, I sent a form to Mr. Swanson, um, the principal, and asked for him to share out a link. Um, there is a link on here when we post this at uh, the end of tonight. Um, families will be able to sign up or come into school and get a, a volunteer opportunity. I think I'm supposed to pass this. Okay, now we're going to talk about the transition activities. Um, so the MEH counselors, so Mr. Sowers, Ms. Jacobson, and Ms. Rivas went to TJ this week to meet with all of your um, lovely kiddos. Hopefully they shared good things. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was fun. Um, and they talked about the registration form, which we'll get to in a little bit, um, which is due next Friday, uh, March 8th. And if you need one, we have extra. Um, and then TJ, the students will come up here to visit us. Um, I don't know when they do that, but soon in the spring. Um, and then they will visit the seventh grade pod. So they'll be in this pod because seventh graders have been working on developing um, products to sell to the fifth graders. And the fifth graders will have like fake currency to go around. And half of them will do that. And half of them will go um, get a tour from my sixth graders of the building. Um, so just a fun way to get them used to the building and used to how things work here at MEH. Um, so we also work with the TJ staff to kind of help them navigate like, okay, this is what our kids are experiencing now so they can kind of talk with the fifth graders and talk about the transition, what to expect, all that fun stuff. And then we as a counseling staff also help support the transition of the fifth graders up here by talking about the route from, I don't know, science to PE and the quickest way to get down there and how to open their lockers and constantly sitting here trying to do it and just talking through that. Just random stuff, transitions, organizations, what to carry, what not to carry, um, all that fun stuff. Uh, but also the week before school starts, we'll have all the f new fifth graders, sixth graders come to um, the school, get their schedule, and they'll walk through um, their route on, on an A day or a B day. And um, well, the te teachers will be here too, right? Yeah. What, yeah. what typically happens, I don't know if I need this mic, but uh, what, what? You just hold it. <laughs> this is weird. So um, what, what typically happens on the week before school starts, you'll see teachers, it'll look just like this pod, especially, have you guys already met with the sixth grade teachers? Okay, so you just came from there. They actually will be in a hall just like this. They have desks that are outside in the hallway. You'll see all the lockers. They'll be lined up with post-it notes. And students come in. Um, they, they obtain their schedule from their teacher. It'll be posted on the outside of the building um, so you can find out exactly who they are. You come in. You grab a post-it note. You hand it to the teacher. They write a combination down. And then as a family, you go through everything that goes in the locker has to come out of the locker, no stickers. Uh, but there's like everything that are in, that's in here. Um, but they go in. And the one thing I would say is that if, uh, if for some reason, if your family is um, on travel and you're not able to come when we designate this day, um, students can still get a locker. They can still come in and do all those transition things. It'll just happen on the very first day of school. Yeah. And we, we help accommodate and there's there's plenty of students that have that happen. So it's not there's not only just gonna be one student. All right, now on to scheduling. So this is the fun sheet that um, your students got. Um, on <coughs> All right, so um, what we described to your students when, when we went and met with them is that we are on a traditional four by four block schedule. You'll hear students start to say A days and B days. And what that means is on a traditional four by four block schedule, you have four times throughout a day that are in a block of 90 minutes long. So when you hear I had math and I had science and I, might, I had a world language and I had an elective course, 
That is true. That is all that they would have had within that one day. Um, and then on the following day, they take four different courses or more, depending if they have an elective. Um, but you'll hear, you'll hear your students start talking about that within those 90-minute blocks, some of those blocks are cut in half. So then they would have a 45-minute class and another 45-minute class. So they, they do have some choice. Um, we'll talk about math here in a minute, but in, in sixth grade, they take, every student takes a sixth grade science class. All students knew this year um, their PE is changed, and that's just due to um, the state mandate saying that we, we, we need to meet um, a certain amount of minutes for our students to be physically active. So instead of a 45-minute PE class that's happening every other day, for some, this is the most exciting news. For others, not so much. But they now have 90-minute PE class every other day. Um, and so with that, the, the first choice that students had uh, was going to be our grade level English or honors English. Um, should have seen a form that uh, went home. It was a one-page handout. It's kind of a diagnostic tool. It, it goes through and it shows you what, what a student would need to be able to do for an honors level class versus a grade level class. At the end of the year, they will take the same SOL or, or state assessment. Um, but we really just describe it to the students as volume. So if you're taking an honors level class, it makes more sense that you're probably going to be required to take uh, or read more anchor books per quarter. You're going to be expected to have uh, a higher uh, rigor in terms of the rubrics and how we assess uh, essays. And instead of maybe a one to two paragraph essay, the student might be working on a three to five paragraph essay. So really we describe it as volume. Um, the next one we'll kind of touch base on the next slide, but it's uh, language acquisition, which talks about our wheel. Um, we'll also kind of highlight the elective classes on the next slide as well. Okay. Yep. You want to take this? Or? Well, I, you, All right. I, I'll stay on the mic. Okay. So um, we, we already talked about language and literature with the two different uh, English courses. What I do want to kind of take a moment to highlight is the elective piece. And this is kind of new. Um, and we, we taught this to the student. And I could see kind of the light bulb go on with the students after we broke this down. So if you think of those blocks that I just kind of talked about where they're 90 minute long, they're within the electives, we break it in half. So there's 45 minute classes. So on one day of a student schedule, they're going to have PE for that full 90 minute block. On the opposite day, they're still going to have an elective, but it's going to look like this. So they either they're having choice. If you're if they're a student that loves music and they're musically inclined, they can take a band class and they can take a choir all year long. That's a 45 minute class and that's a 45 minute class so that takes away that block or a student can start coming up with combinations. They could take a band class for 45 minutes and then that's going to free up two more classes for them. So they can either take a computer science, a theater, a family and consumer science, um, a facts class. This is like home economics. Um, or they can take an art class. So they could take, for example, a band and two of these, or a choir and two of these because they're semester long classes, meaning quarter one, quarter two, or and then quarter three and quarter four. The one thing, if, if you have a student that does not like to sing in the shower and does not choose to play an instrument, tuba, for the lucky people that elect to take tuba. That's what my son wanted to take. Um, then they can take four electives over here because they're not, they're going to free up this 45 minute time, time over here and this 45 minute time. So they'll be able to take all four of these. All right. Oh, yeah, it's math placement. Okay. All right. I, I used to be a sixth grade math teacher when I first started, so I'll, I'll, I'll take this one as well um, years ago. Um, but with uh, math placement, so there is no there's no check box that's on that registration form. And what we want to highlight is that it's not just one specific assessment which dictates the different math levels. There are three math levels that we offer in sixth grade. Our students are either taking a math six, which is grade level or they're taking a math seven, which is seventh grade math, or they're taking eighth grade math, which is a pre-algebra course. Um, 
And there is a myth um, for uh, in the public uh, in terms of where students get placed. We do not have caps. We do not have space. We do not say, you know, we're only going to offer 25 students into a certain class, like into a certain, like say math eight. It's really dependent on the class. This is the biggest class that we've had coming to the middle school. Um, and so I would say historically on a class that we've always had that ran about 200 students, you would see in the math eight, probably about 25 to 35 students. So we usually have one or two sections. And then in a math seven, that's where you would see usually two to four sections. And then the majority of students are taking math six. Um, and they will take those grade level um, SOLs at the end of the year. Um, but all this uh, data points are really what they use to send me the information when we send out placement letters in the, in the, um, in the summer. Um, so the, the three languages that um, your students will take are intro to Mandarin, intro to French, and intro to Spanish. So per the MYP, um, the philosophy of getting an exploration of these languages before they start diving deeper when they go into seventh and eighth grade when we are asked, we ask them what language they want to take. So these intro classes um, kind of just get their feet wet a little bit on the languages, learn the background of it, learn some things, enough to where they can make a decision of what language they want to take in seventh and eighth grade. Um, and then their fourth rotation is a career in design course. Any questions? <laughs> so a, a parent had asked in the last section about the career and design course. So again, that's a new class. Um, and it's essentially in the seventh grade. So if you have students that are in seventh grade or, or in eighth grade, um, a part of the state mandate is that students do what's called an ACP or an academic and career plan. Um, basically, it's taking all their assessments, their skill interests, um, and we take all those, we analyze them, we try to come up with different options for students to explore and not saying a specific job, but career clusters or career pa uh, pathways. And then they take those and then we match those with their academics. And we try to map out and plan how, would the, how, how do the classes you take in seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade um, mirror your goals and what you want to accomplish, knowing that in, as a seventh grade student or a sixth grade student, they're still exploring all those options. Um, but we've taken essentially a lot of the curriculum that we used to do to push into the classrooms to design this nine week long course um, that we're going to be teaching to the students up as part of that uh, world language wheel. Are there any questions? Yes. How did the small group counseling organization management uh, get formed? Um, I mean, that's like some parents reach out to me um, and ask, like, hey, can you help? And then I ask the student. So the student has to be willing to want to be in a group and participate in the group. Um, sometimes, the te a lot of the times, the sixth grade teachers will just do it in the classroom. A lot of them do time management and organization on a weekly basis. Um, and I just meant that as an example. Oh, yeah. 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 So um, I've had parents reach out to me. I've seen it with kids. So I just kind of make that gut decision that I want to help them. Um, I do it one-on-one -on -one or it just depends. Yeah. So if you make the wrong decision regarding if your child should be in sixth grade English or honors, do kids move back and forth during the year? Not, not back and forth, but if, if it's too rigorous, can they go down or yes. vice versa? Yes, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll add to that. So if, you're, if your student is considering one or the other, and if there's a potential move, go for the advanced. Okay. Because if you start in a grade level and you find it's not challenging enough, by the time you move up, that advanced or that honors level class is exponentially moved on. So if you're, in an, if you're in an honors level class and you were to stay in the honors level, say two weeks, three weeks, an entire quarter, and then you found that the rigor was too difficult or your student was not having success in that class, measured by however way the family views success, then you can move down. But it's, but it's much difficult to move back up. Yeah. Yes. Uh, regarding the languages, is there any option for the kids who just simply already tried and were introduced to the languages 
and can choose a one language <coughs> that they are for sure want to study. Because for me, for example, TJ's offered Spanish for already three years. So I think it's kind of enough of time to know do you like it or not. And for me, um, it means that, for example, the additional introduction classes in already tried, tried language, it's, it's kind of a waste of time. And I, do you have the option for the kids who can focus only on one language and know exactly that they want to study this one? So, so that's a good question. Um, how, how I would answer that, um, I would say the, the majority of our students are taking the exploratory wheel. There are some case-by-case -case situations, and the families just reach out to that counselor, so that would be me, and I would field those, and we would work on a plan. Thank you. But, but, the, but the majority do take the wheel. Mm -hmm. Do the Encore classes build upon each other? So if you don't take computer science in sixth grade, if you took it in seventh grade, are you a disadvantage, or could you do that? They're pretty, they're pretty different, right? So no, they're, they're, it, it, it's not a disadvantage, but I would I would actually ask that question in the next round because that's on, you're going to be talking to Encore next. So I would actually just ask that question in the next round. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I was curious a little bit more about <clears throat> the career design. I assume a quarter of the students are taking it first. Yes. So that seems like they're in a very different place and being able to project their career from six months from now. Right? And 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 the, and and it's just the course for right now, but they will be doing more exploration in seventh grade. They'll do be, be doing more in eighth grade. The biggest change that we've had this year is in our encore schedule and the choices that students are making in terms of their encore classes. It's a change for us as well. So things that are required for your sixth graders, where they do not have a choice. We have the sixth grade MYP wheel, which are required quarter length classes that are 90 minutes every other day. So your students will go through each of these classes for a quarter, Mandarin, Spanish, French, and careers in design. So all of those are, are mandatory. The careers and design component is dictated by the state, the number of hours for CTE. When it comes to them having choices, they can choose a year of band and or choir, and or, um, and then they can choose quarter length classes from computer science, theater, facts, and art. So hypothetically, a kid, for example, chose band for the entire year. They could then pick two of these other classes, or if they were like, no, I'm good on the music part of my life, they could choose all, they could have all of these classes as well. Or they could be like, all about music and take band and choir. We would love that kid. <laughs> we love all our kids anyway. Um, so... That's just a little bit about the schedule. And then my clicker is done, I guess, for the evening, apparently. So this is just a little bit about the Encore team and the Encore philosophy. We think that the arts make people better people. And we love teaching our classes because we believe that they make our students more well-rounded, more caring, more creative, better problem solvers. And so we like to think our classes are pretty important. Um, so that's just our little Support the Arts blurb. And then we also have our guidelines listed from the VDOE website and the MYP criterion for arts and design. And that'll show you kind of the hours that students are required to meet for arts and design, as well as what they're assessed on. It's really done. So we thought it would be fun this year, instead of us standing up telling you about our classes that we would let our students tell you about our classes because they know it best um, it was very enlightening seeing their perceptions of our classes um, it was very fun um, which is a word you will hear a lot fun so we'd like to think that we teach them a lot through fun um, so you'll hear a little bit about that from them so enjoy did it work
Welcome to our class where you can be fun and creative. You wish you could draw, paint, and have fun? Well, join our class. Have, we have, you can have fun learning and have fun being yourself. Our class, why is it hard? What do you do? Well, in art class, you learn about art elements with our poetic art teacher, Miss Lee. Roses are red. So are lobsters. Yay! <laughs> and they process journals. But most importantly, you have fun. So, join 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 art class. Please, please, please. It's fun. <laughs> Sure, 
but um, it's mechanical, and there's some mechanical things in it. You're not done yet, and you're, we're not done with it yet, but what you can do, it's going to be able to work on its own, so yeah. So this is a controller that we made using Makey Makey that can control this Makey Makey car thing. And <laughs> okay, so theater is a really fun and accepting class, and we do a lot of fun projects, and we play a lot of fun games if we're doing well and we get our support done. So it's a very accepting community. I know we do do a lot of presentations and stuff, all the presentations are accepting, and you don't have to be scared to talk in front of your group or do a pre like do a project and be in front of them because they're not going to judge you. It's a safe space, and you don't have to be afraid to do anything in that class. It's also really helpful that Miss G is just an amazing teacher, and she always teaches you that you have to be yourself, and that it's there's no one in the world better to be except you. So she really is a good, great teacher at telling you how to be yourself. Hey, rising sixth graders, this is the best place in the world where you can have fun and learn at the same time. It's called the library and the makerspace. There are tons of good books in the world here, and we have tons of genres, and we have fiction and nonfiction, and a ton of compliments. Here you can do other activities I than just check out books. You can other do puzzles and other things here and enjoy your time in the library. The Makerspace is also a really good place to have fun. Just get creative, use that hot blue that's like a pot. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we love teaching middle school. Um, so that's the Encore classes in a nutshell, I would encourage your students to watch these videos as they're making their class choices to get a little bit more information. But let us know if we can answer any questions. And thank you for, yeah, sorry. I have a question about, they have to choose now between different Encores, but if they choose different ones in seventh grade, does the first year build upon the second year? Like, can you compare the solutions to you have to take it in sixth grade to take, to it, take it the next year. I don't know how they're going to work. Uh, I'm, this is kind of new to us, the new schedule, so I, I don't know if there's anything I'm missing. But as far as like, will they be able to like do handle my class in seventh grade? They will. No problem at all. We'll be able to kind of catch them up with anything like we need to know. Do you do it this year, or are you starting it next year? We're starting it next year. This new format. Yeah. yeah. The, the classes are similar, but the same. But the new format. And if we have a child that doesn't want to I think that this I think that I think they would do each of those four we're not repeating classes the students are going to be able to rank their encore classes in order that they want them um, but yeah I don't I don't think that they're repeating classes in within si in sixth grade within the same year the the seventh grade classes and the eighth grade classes are longer, so students then are kind of more able to narrow down their interests and go more in depth in some of those subject areas. But along those same lines, because where we do have a lot of transient students, like 15, 20% moving in and out at any given time, our classes by design are going to be set up where a student can come in in seventh grade not having had something in sixth grade. So mm -hmm. that, that's something that we naturally do. Question regarding PE, um, everything is here in the gym, but maybe you know about uh, after school swimming club, if there is attached to the school or? Actually, um, a high school just re in recent years got a varsity and JV swim team, but there is no, we don't have a pool, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> that got voted out quickly. Uh, but um, there, is, there are swimming clubs in the area, both in the summer, but also um, indoor. There's a variety of choices mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can talk to you about, yeah. Okay, thank that you. other cl outside clubs. Mm -hmm. Is um, 3D printing in computer solutions or technology? Oh, uh, computer solutions. Yeah, it's where you do 3D printing. And the makerspace. Yeah, so. the makerspace as well. Okay. Yeah. What are the instruments for band? Blue clarinet, saxophone, French horn, trombone, tuba, All percussion, people. drums. So there's no, like band is just band, no orchestra history. Um, Orchestra is a uh, after school activity. Okay. Yep. Similar to TJ's after school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Is 
is a design class the intro to tech? Is that your class? Or? Correct. Uh, next year will become uh, careers in design, which will have a focus on careers uh, as part of the CTE curriculum. Uh, we have to do workplace readiness skills, so we're incorporating those matches up with the ATL skill or approaches to learning and MYP. So those two work hand in hand. And that's why we're combining careers into the design. The course will be similar, but it will also be focused more on careers as well. Yes. I wanted to clarify what I thought I'd heard about uh, the semester based on core classes. So, if you, for example, a student chooses computers and art. And did someone say you can't repeat them? The, like, so, that's so first and second semester, I'm sorry. Um, quarter. quarter, yeah. Or, forgive me. Um, so, in third and fourth, they would have to take mm -hmm. that they didn't select, for example, if they're doing. Correct. Yes. And you support the entire school. You are the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And we know all their names. Yes. Can I ask a question about PE class? Sure. Yes. yes. I just heard from the last session of the PE lessons increased from 45 minutes to 90 minutes the other day. Yep. Isn't that great coming from TJ yeah. instead of every G day or S or whatever that hockey <laughs> schedule is? So you get yeah. lots of PE. Like, uh, yeah. My question is, do you have a plan for the adding? Do you have a, is, is the change because you need to add new activities into the PE or you just to extend, to extend the existing activity time? So, the way our new schedule is going to be set up, whether it be um, kind of like a team day versus a subject day, where the way we're set up currently, like let's say if you te taught math, the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade math teachers can't meet because they have their planning at different times. And so that will be the A days and then the B days. And that's one of the reasons the Encore and PE structure has been set to 90 minutes. And so um, the high school next door, I mean, they've been doing this for years. So um, we've been bouncing ideas and we'll talk with them more and more about what that looks like. Um, but, um, and with that also, with the increase of population, that's another dynamic that we're gonna be working on. Besides the awesome new gym, um, besides that, we, we still have the rock and fitness room and everything else that we've been using and health. So we'll probably have a rotation of some sort set up um, where it alleviates some of the space with the increased population. But the, the 90 minutes every other day, that was that came from the state and the yeah. number of minutes that students yeah. are supposed to be in physical education. We keep hearing about the, the big explosion and increase in population. How much of an increase is it? Two class words. In two classrooms. So it's about 50 kids more than we're used to having. Yeah, we're usually right around the 200 number, and this group I think is 250, 250 projected, 247 plus an extra. In the summer, we usually get 20 to 30 that are unexpected and aren't calculated for. That number's pretty hard and fast. It works out soon every year. Yeah, that's, that's... Well, encore classes are traditionally a little bit larger anyway. I mean, I can yeah. only speak for choir and band and, and yeah, and PE. I mean, we, I mean, when you have two PE teachers, that's double a traditional class size. When you have choir and band, we meet as an ensemble. So, you know, Mr. Mills and I are no stranger to having larger classes. Some of the encore classes are restricted by space, like facts. You can only have a certain number of kids in a kitchen safely at the same time, right? Like that's just, okay. yeah, right, exactly. Um, because safety. Um, so it just it just kind of depends on the classes. And in and, and PE's case, to your point, um, that because of the rise in population, they're, um, we're likely to have a third PE teacher next year, which will help spread it out even more, which is great. Yay! <laughs> yeah, overdue. Yeah. Are there any sports teams track or anything like that? There is, uh, for sixth grade, there is club. There is a club track in a winter track. And I believe there's also girls on track as well and co-ed. Oh, and I'm, uh, oh, always forget that about me. I'm also the <laughs> sponsor for the morning exercise club. So if, you're, if your students are early risers or you feel like they need that morning boost, um, they can come on Thursdays, I mean, once a week um, in the mornings for morning workout. Oh, there's tennis club too. And there's tennis club. Um, so many clubs. Yep. We have so an intermediate club pass too. There, to your question specifically, there aren't specific teams in this building. 
I know in other parts of the state, and especially in the Midwest, it's very common for one middle school to play another middle school in sports. We don't do that. Um, and eighth graders are allowed to try for JV for the sports next door, but not seven through six. We promote the youth sports, especially in Foster City, and a lot of kids play Arlington, McLean, and uh, specifically swimming. Why? They have in all of them. Thank you for coming.